But without much further ado, let's get this year's summit started. And the honor of being the first presenter goes to Akerix and CEO Per Persson. Welcome. Good morning, Cecilia, and thank you very much. And i like to say to all our investors and uh, shareholders that this is a great opportunity for Akerix to be first out and represent our in this coming two days. Uh, in today's presentation, I'm going to focus a little bit more about where we are and what we have achieved and uh, partly refer to the quarter report that we released last week. And I'm going to spend a little bit less on, on the corporate and the technology itself because I hope that that has been exposed um, quite a bit in the, in the recent presentations. Anyway, so let's dig into it. So Acarix is a Swedish company. We are noted on the uh, Nasdaq First North and have been so since December 2016. We are currently a company working with one product it's called the uh, CAD score. And the CAD score is an innovation that is uh, perceiving and receiving the acoustics from the coronary vessels of the patients. And by listening and, and developing an algorithm, we are able to sustain and find out whether this patient is susceptible for a, a coronary artery disease or not. It's simply a rule out of coronary artery disease. And um, we got the C mark in 2015, and we have been our commercial pathways in the later part of 2017. Now, why would we develop a product that will actually help and support rule out in the market? First of all, I'm sure that most of the investors and the people that are listening to this are aware that uh, cardiac disease is actually the number one killer in the world and has been for a long while. And um, what many people do not know, though, is that out of all those patients that are coming to the healthcare uh, system with their uh, uh, stable coronary artery disease, they do not suffer from coronary artery disease. We have about one out of 10 only of those that are putting a tremendous pressure on the healthcare system. And what we are doing, we're simply trying to help the healthcare system during the patient pathway to rule those patients out and thereby limit the number of patients that you get into the more advanced cares. It's simply rule out the patient that should not be uh, putting weight on the advanced part of the care system. You might also know that the cardiac disease area is an area that unfortunately is having a very, very uh, stable growth. And that is related to diabetes, to obesity, and a global picture in itself. So the market for Acarix is sustainable, it's growing, and it's there for a long time to be. Looking at the technology, uh, we have developed a, an algorithm and we're using a platform called CATSCORE by which we are listening to the sound of the coronary vessels. We determine the flow. We're able to detect whether there will be any stenosis, anything that is narrowing the vessels, and also have a sense for the stiffness of the coronary vessels. Those factors in itself combine with the risk factors that you always would consider looking at the gender, the age group, and, and the weight. We are putting all those parameters into our algorithm and after less than 10 minutes of, of um, listening to patients' vessels and hearts, we're able to determine a factor that would say whether this patient is subject for a coronary artery disease or likely not to be there. And we're using a system uh, called a CAT score where 0 to 20 means that you are um, out of the risk zone and 21 and upwards means that you should be considered for further uh, examinations. Looking at this, you have to now try to follow me. This is a business slide that I'm normally building, but in the interest of time, I'm going to take you through it in, in a quicker way. You have to consider yourself being the patient on the very left side of this slide. What you would do and what's happening in most of the Western um, uh, developed countries in terms of how you treat the patient, the patient pathways, is that you would come and see your general practitioners or a specialist, depending on the country itself. When you come in there with your stable chest pain, you're not an emergency patient, they would always start with doing an anamnese. The anamnese is simply an interview with the patient where you consider the risk factors, diabetes, smoking, heritage, etc. This is something that you would always do and we also con consider this part of the normal pathway for the patient. What's happening then is that you as a physician uh, have to consider whether you see this as a potential chance of coronary vessel disease or not. And normally you would send them patient for doing a stress ECG or a, a treadmill test where you put uh, the patient and increase their pulse in order to determine their uh, potential coronary vessel disease. If you take it further down the road, the waiting time would increase, the cost would increase, and you would also have still the same number. Many of the patients that you would send into more advanced care 
would not be suffering from coronary artery disease. It can be related to panic anxiety, it can be related to a burnout syndrome, or simply infections and other things. You do not want to put those patients uh, adding weight to the healthcare system for cardiac uh, vessel disease. If you look at the study that we have developed for this, being a small company, this is a very respectful slide. We are less than 10 employees, and over the period of time, we have been able to develop a very, very rigid and, and solid uh, evidence. Um, we have been uh, considering the amount and the size we are, we are able to actually use our means and provide good scientific data with very limited investments, which is also giving us the, the chance to come out with strong results over the time. Currently, we have a number of uh, um, um, uh, clinical presentation that's coming up very soon. We have the Danica 2 that is about to close uh, in a couple of weeks. We have the Seismo that is an examination where we're looking for heart failure patients, which we closed in June. And we have the Acoustic that is done in a local uh, region with about 200 patients from, from Germany. So many things are coming out and we are continuing to put that investment in place in order to sustain uh, evidence in the outcome of what we're doing with the patients. When I look at where we have been and where we are today, we have had some very, very strong development on the commercial side. And I think that if there is one slide I'd like to spend a little bit more time on is this one. You have to consider that we are a company with 10 employees and two, three consultants working with us to, to achieve this kind of part. We're having a dialogue with the notified bodies in three of the major markets in the world. US, biggest medical uh, device market in the world, Japan number two, Germany number three. We are in, in, a, in a profound dialogue with all those three recognized notified bodies. And if you look at the status of them, with GBA in Germany, we have actually driven this with our emphasis to a point where GBA is saying that your technology is very promising, it's adding a tremendous value potentially to our market. We would like to see a little bit more of the evidence and then we'll make the decision for that. That is an achievement itself. When it comes to what we have done in the UK and with regards to the NICE, we submitted our MIB, which is the Medical Innovation Brief, and we got the feedback in June 2019, where they are simply saying that there is a potential that you can use the CATSCO system in a risk stratification and that is potentially superior to other clinical risk scores. That is an achievement as well. Finally, when it comes to the FDA discussion, uh, we've been in and out in that discussion. It's been a, a time for waiting, but we are still in a very active and positive dialogue with the FDA, and I will come back to that in a minute. So, those three areas are really major achievements for a small company and you should also consider this as a very, very important part of our uh, value creation for us as shareholders, investors and of course also the, uh, the customers that we're facing towards. So very, very strong move us forward on that. I'll come back now to a few of the objectives that we raised when we did the right issue that we closed in, in uh, the later part of October. And I'm just going to touch a few of those because in the interest of time, I'm really not able to cover each and one of them. GBA, or the reimbursement process in Germany. Here you have the slide with Gemeinsamer Bundesausschuch. And uh, here I really want to be very transparent and explain to you exactly where we are. As you might have seen, in September we got a request from GBA where they asked for a, um, a, a submission from the market, which means it's not only from McCarrick, it's actually for them to determine and, and, uh, and consolidate uh, data and evidence from the field. They issued a questionnaire with a number of questions plus a proposal that they would like to see a study being performed in Germany that is actually going to support the technology itself. Where we are today, and this is all being driven by Acarix as a company, all the questions, everything that is in the material is really considering where we are and it's taking our studies into account where they're deferring to it. For the moment, uh, we made our submission on time, of course, with all the responses towards the authorities. And we also proposed a study setup that we think would be the fastest way, but also the most accurate way to get um, a result that will actually support what we have made in our founding so far. To come back to the timing and the transparency, we're looking about 20 sites in total. We are proposing 2,000 patients. We know that also with the pandemic situation, there is a delay for most of them. And we expect GBA to come back to us 
at the very end of this year or potentially a bit into 2021, so January, February timing, with a confirmation of all the questions and also a proposal of what they want to do from a study perspective. The study itself will then be funded either by GBA, by any external organizations or sponsor, or at the end by a company such as Acarix. That is still up in the play there, of course. So that is a very, very promising uh, update and feedback on where we are with regards to the German uh, reimbursement process. Next step is to give you an update on the US market. And this is, of course, one of the things that we see a, a lot of comments and a lot of reading about on the, the analyst pages. Uh, we have been very transparent about the timing and about the situation. We also know that there will always be impact currently for anyone because of the pandemic situation. And it's very, very hard to understand the impact of the delays. However, to take it back as a recap, we did our uh, submission as a 510k. Feedback from FDA was that we need to go the de novo region. We've done that. And as you can see, we've had a number of questions back from, from FDA from July to August into September. And then we had our uh, recent deadline where we submitted the answer by the end of September. Since then, we haven't heard back from them. And we just did a recent checkup with them a few days ago. And the feedback from FDA was the files are received, please be patient, which I think is a quite understandable statement for the time being. In theory or in practice, it's actually meaning that from an FDA perspective, that could be news, questions, feedback coming any day now, but it could, of course, also drag into a bit of the later part of the year or beginning of next year. Finally, on the related opportunities to FDA, it's really about giving us access to play in the market and actually giving us access to work with commercial partnership. And it's going to be a tremendous strength for us as an organization. I need to skip along a little bit here because I think that we are getting to the end of this wonderful presentation. When it comes to the UK, we have done what we said. We have been collecting the information and we're right now ready um, to get the, the final proposal on the health uh, economic assessment that's being made by device access in the UK. And that report is coming back to us in the later part of this year. And we're then going to be able to renew the discussions with NICE in having that progress. Finally, on the study side, I just wanted to highlight this one because this is actually happening as we speak. We have a publication uh, about to be, but the presentation, the poster presentation is happening here and now at the ISPO conference. And this is a first real life patient data with 1,070 patients we have collected. And what's really important is that the clinical outcome is referring and looking very similar to what we had in our first larger study, which was the Danicad one. So from a clinical perspective, we are confirming what we have said. And we're also seeing that in a real life situation, when physicians from four different countries in Europe are actually using CAD score in the daily dues. Finally, the slide on the milestones, where you can see that it's of course a, a subject for, for movements and it's all related to the pandemic situation and to any response from the notified bodies. But in the end, 2021 is going to be the most exciting year for Acarix by far. And there is a number of triggering factors that is really going to impact our performance in the longer term. Thank you so much. Thank you, Per, and thank you for the speeding up there at the end. Thank you. <laughs> so you talked a lot about, naturally, the work you're doing with the FDA. Sure. Would you say this is the most important thing that's going on in the company right now? I would say that there are uh, three factors that are really driving our business for the moment. One is FDA, the second one is, of course, the reimbursement in Germany, and thirdly, we like to, to get a little bit more recognition and move forward in the UK and the NICE. But if I look at the, the one that will have definitely the biggest uh, impact on us as a value creation for the company, it will naturally be the, uh, the FDA approval. Just important to state that FDA approval in itself doesn't mean that there will be a, a revenue stream from day one. It's really giving us an incredibly value and recognition of the technology. And like I said, a ticket to play from a commercial perspective in the US. And that is going to be tremendous for us. If we change the topic to a topic no one can avoid, and you mentioned the pandemic. So of course, COVID-19 has had an impact on, on the life science sector. Is there any positive impacts for your company that you could highlight for us? Yeah, I think that if you look at the results of, of the, the quarter reports, we are still coming from a, from a low baseline, but we do see uh, much more of an interest. We see that we have an easier ability to actually close the business when we're doing an evaluations. So we had more systems placed in the market during Q3 
And I do believe that much of that is coming, that people are looking for alternative ways. The advantage with the CATSCO system is that you don't need to be in an area where you have many staff, many people attending. You can actually do it in a very, very isolated environment, like here where we are today. <laughs> Yeah, so there are positive aspects maybe Absolutely. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Has it affected the process or the way you work in any way, the COVID-19? I think for us, the, the given answer is, of course, like for all companies, it's have Im impacted our abilities to travel. Uh, this has been impacted uh, the enrollment uh, speed of the clinical studies and, of course, the ability for the sales organization to be out in the field. However, I also think that we have been able to adapt to that situation. And of course, like everybody's saying, you, you start to really be uh, more selective in, in the activities you actually do. And so far, our studies are back in rolling. Uh, the, the team in Germany and Norway are able to go and see customers. So, of course, there will be an impact if this uh, escalates and con continues. But right now, we are, we are feeling very comfortable where we are. Good, so we can look forward to more news during 2021 from Akarix then? That is for sure, and I hope you had the opportunity to look at that. And, and there is a lot of good things going on for us, very much so. We look forward to that. And thank you for opening this year's Biostock Life Science Summit for us. It was a great pleasure. Thank you and goodbye.